In this video, we're going to take a look at a titanium alcohol stove from the company Lixata. I'm also going to show you how I modified mine to make it more versatile. If you're interested, keep watching. So what I'd like to do is take you down to the tabletop where I'll give you some close-ups of this alcohol stove from Lixata. I'll go over its specifications. I'll show you how it can be used in combination with three of my wood stoves. And then I'll show you how I've modified it to get more versatility out of it. So as you can see, I actually have two of these titanium alcohol stoves. The first one, under the brand name Thai Artisan, I bought quite a few years ago. Now, I don't see it under this brand name any longer, but it's very commonly available under the brand name Lixata. And of course, I'll provide links to where you can purchase these in the video description below. So I became interested in these uh, a few years ago when I saw them as a less expensive alternative to the more well-known Tokes Siphon Stove. So I purchased the first one from Thai Artisan, and I, I really started to appreciate what it was capable of. What I also discovered though, however, is that it's not the same size as the Tokes. And I'll give you some comparison sizes in one moment. But overall, the performance is very close. They do have a little bit of a volume difference and they do have a little bit of a boil time difference, but otherwise they work virtually identically. So let me just put the Thai Artisan one away and we'll use this one for the majority of the demonstrations. So as I go over the specifications for the stove, I'll give you a few close-ups. We'll talk about how they function. So this one right now, as of the making of this video, is available on Amazon.ca, that's Amazon Canada, for $34.99 and available on all on AliExpress for $27. Now that compares with the Tokes Siphon Stove, which is selling for $48 Canadian. So you can see it's getting close to being twice the cost of this one. So you can see why I was interested in purchasing it. So the weight of these stoves is a very featherlight 1.5 ounces or 42 grams. The diameter across the top is 2.4 inches or 60 millimeters. And the height is 1.9 inches or 48 millimeters. Now I'll give you the size and weights for the tokes and you can see how close they are yet still very different. Now the information I'm gonna provide you for the tokes is from their website. I do not have one, although it, maybe I will buy one at some time just to get some closer comparisons. But the weight for the Tokes version of this stove is 0.7 ounces or 20 grams. As you can see, half the weight of this one. Now I say that's what they claim on the website. I can't prove that, but uh, I, I actually I find it a little hard to believe because it is smaller than this, but not that much smaller. The diameter for the Tokes is two and one eighths inches or 53 millimeters. And its height is one and a half inches or 40 millimeters. So quite a bit smaller than these. And that's important if you're trying to use one of these stoves in something that was designed for the tokes, you'll find that this may be a little bit too big for that. So what I'd like to do now is set them up in three different little wood stoves that I have to show you how well they work. So the first wood stove that I want to demonstrate putting the alcohol stove in is the uh, Nano from the Firebox stove, this being the titanium version. And when I pack this stove for going to the woods, I actually put one of these alcohol stoves, one of the two that I have with it, because I, I feel they work better actually than the Trangia, and you'll see why in a few minutes' time. So I, when you're using these two together, of course, you have to spread the top bars apart to get it in. What you'll note is there is no need for the little pieces that uh, go through the sides of the Nano that you use to set the Trangia with. It actually has a near perfect pot gap just sitting on the floor of the Nano. So when you set it in the Nano, the pot gap is one and three quarter inches from the top of the stove to the pot rests on top. And what I've discovered is, is that is a near perfect height for boiling. So because in all of my tests, the best pot gap that you can use for use with these stoves is between 1.5 and 1.75. So one and a half to one and three quarter inches. And I, I would leave it up to you to do some testing with whatever wood stove or combination that you have. But I found that the higher height 
actually will bring water to a boil faster and use the fuel more efficiently than if you tried to lower it down to one inch. So this is one setup and I will set these up in a minute and show you how they operate with fuel in them, but I wanted to bring in two other stoves so I can also show you. So this is another stove that I have used them with. This you'll probably recognize as also from Lixada. This is the titanium version of the tower stove. And of course, if you've seen me use these before in other videos, you simply turn it upside down, drop them together, and there you go. There's the wood stove in its assembled fashion. But in order to use it with an alcohol stove, all the only component you really need is this part, what's considered the pot stand out for the top of it. So in order to use it with this, simply place the alcohol stove down, put it where you can see it, place this on top and you're good to go. The uh, air volume or the, the holes around the top provide sufficient airflow so you're not going to knock or smother off the alcohol stove. And the pot gap from the top of the alcohol stove to the bottom or the top of the wood stove portion here is one and five eighths. Again, near perfect. It just happened to work out that way. So that's two stoves that I've used it with. And the third stove, this appeared in a video recently. This is the Goss Hawk Eddy, a titanium wood gas stove that is sold out of Australia. And I have a full review of this stove, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. Works well with wood, works even better with wood pellets, but works very well with this stove. In fact, the Goshawk people sell a version of this stove branded under their own name, exactly the same size, and they have designed the wood stove so that it will fit inside and come to an ideal pot height of, again, one and five eighths. So you can see just over one and a half inches is what's recognized as the sweet spot for use with this alcohol stove. So in a moment, what I'll do is I'll take the two alcohol stoves and set them up with two of the wood stoves just so you can see how they work in combination. But what I want to do first is just go over a little bit of the performance of this alcohol stove as well as a few of its key features. Then I'll show you what I've done to modify them to get greater versatility the out of them. So what is, as I mentioned a minute ago, the ideal pot gap off of the top of this stove is between one and a half and one and three quarters inches. And the testing that I've done has come up with some pretty amazing uh, boil times. So using one ounce of alcohol and two cups of water, you can get a boil time of around four minutes, 10 seconds. I say around, of course, because it depends on other environmental conditions, such as what the ambient air temperature is, as well as the temperature of the water. But I was able to get an average of four minutes, 10 seconds, and a six minute run out. So as you can see, it will go through the fuel very quickly. It'll create a lot of intense heat. It'll bring your water to a boil, but then it's gonna run out shortly thereafter. Now, that's one of the key features Features is how quickly you can bring water to a boil with it. But probably the single most important key feature about this is how quickly this will come to a bloom. How quickly after you light it, you can put a pot on top of it and, and expect to get peak performance out of it. So those are two of the key features. Now, one other thing I really like about these stoves is how easy it is to recover unused alcohol from it. So once you extinguish the flame and let it cool down a bit, of course, you can very easily with some type of a container pour uh, leftover alcohol in it and you get almost everything back. Sometimes there's a little bit left inside that evaporates very quickly, but it makes it very easy to get your alcohol back that's unused. The only problem, of course, is how do you extinguish it? And that's where I want to start with the modification. So the first modification I wanted to make for this stove was some way of extinguishing the flame. And what I came up with was a little snuff cap that was made from a pull top tuna tin. And I'll show you how I made that in a few minutes time because it's quite easy to make out of one of these tuna tins. So that now resolved the issue of how to put the flame out and it allows me to recover the alcohol from the stove once it's cooled off, of course. But the next issue was how how can I make this stove simmer? So I wanted to come up with something that was similar to the snuff cap on a Trangia, which can be used also as a simmer ring by varying the opening on top. So again, I turned to the tuna can, 
can and I came up with this which is just to drill a hole in the center and uh, that's what I started with. Now I, there are three iterations of this I'll show you as I go along. This one is at exactly one inch and what I discovered is one inch is just a little bit too small in that as often as not it would actually extinguish the flame and not allow it to keep burning. So the next one I tried come in at one and a half inches. Now one and a half inches worked on top of this stove and it would continue to burn. The only issue was is that it was a little bit too hot. In other words, it, it was just below the full hard flame of an open top and didn't quite knock the flame down for as far as I would like to. So I came up with one more and this come came in at, at one and a quarter inches. So there's a one and a quarter inch hole. And this for me is the ideal size for use on top of this stove. And I'll talk to you in a few minutes time on how I made these uh, uh, rings and these, these simmer rings as well. But you're probably noticing that there are a few attachments on each of these. So let's go back to the snuff ring. Again, I'll show you the material that it's made from, but this is the aluminized tape that can be used for ducts and venting and heating uh, ducts and the like, uh, because it is resistant to heat. It has a peel off back, backing on it. And I was able to just fold it a little piece. Now this folds down out of the way when it's not in use and it's perfect for reaching over and dropping down to snuff it out. Well, when I started, I also used it for the holding on to the simmer rings and it works. It's just, as you'll see, a little awkward to reach into the wood stoves and put it on, but uh, it will work to hold these in place. So the last style I came up with was to use some of that aluminized tape and a little piece of copper wire and just create a bit of a lever handle that now I can reach into my stoves and put this on top and uh, it works just perfectly. And of course, when it's not in use, you can just fold it out of the way for storage. So that worked very well. So how effective is this? What can it do for you in terms of creating a simmer for your stove? So you, again, using one ounce of fuel, and uh, just a, a thought here, you do have to wait till it comes to a full bloom before you put this ring on because you don't want to accidentally snuff it out before it's hot enough to maintain itself. But once it comes to a full bloom, I'd like to give it 15, 20 seconds to warm up a bit. And then you place the ring on top. I'm able to get a flame out of this for 34 minutes before it runs out of alcohol. That is significant for one ounce of alcohol to be able to simmer something for 34 minutes is uh, quite impressive. At least it was for me. So you can, it, you know, it's a very, very low simmer, especially if you start with water that's already brought to a boil and then put this on top to get 34 minutes of simmer time is very impressive. So uh, that's my performance. So that's what I was able to come up with for this. You may be able to want to experiment and come up with something a little bit different, again, by varying the size of the open opening. You can get some different times out of it. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is set this up in the wood stoves as I mentioned and then we'll go on to showing you how I made those snuff caps and simmer rings. So for the purposes of this demonstration I have chosen to use just the Firebox Nano and show you how they work together and uh, what I will do also is turn this last light off so that you can get a good clear picture of the flame pattern inside of it. You'll also notice that I do have a metal plate sitting on top of my table. This has a bit of a rim on it just in case and although it's never happened to me but just in case I were to spill any of the alcohol out I would hate to see it spread across my table. So let's start by priming the stove with a little bit of alcohol. So I'm using a little bit less than an ounce, which is all that's really necessary for this demonstration purposes. I'll put that down inside of the Nano and I will get this started and then I will turn the light out. So a little trick that I have for quite often for lighting these because it can be a little bit difficult getting a spark or flame down inside is to use a piece of cotton string as a wick. Touch it to the alcohol, light the wick, ignite the flame inside. Let's see if I'll turn that last light off. 
And you can see just how quickly that came to a bloom. I mean, that's that's just incredibly fast. That was barely seconds at all. So I do have a second camera running where I'll bring some shots in of the flame from the side as I put my kettle on. So the kettle I'm using for demonstration purposes is the Uber Lieben Kessel, a titanium version of that, which is a great little kettle, works very well for this demonstration type purposes. And with that side on shot, you should be able to see how the flame is merged together in a single column and then spread out again as they come in contact with the bottom of the kettle. Now, the next part of the demonstration is to be able to show you how the simmer ring works. So I'm able now to reach in with my simmer ring, place it on top, and you can see there's still a significant flame get it down there just properly, of course. There is still a significant flame coming out through the top of that, but I'll tell you, it's much less intense than it is when just the open flame without the simmer ring on. So now I can remove the simmer ring and I can reach in with the snuff cap and put the flame out. And of course, now once this is cooled down, I'll be able to recover that alcohol. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the Lexata Titanium Alcohol Stove. So to begin, what do I really like about this stove? Well, there are a few things, but I think it has to be the lightweight. It being made from titanium, it is not only lightweight, but it is also very durable. It's a very simple stove to operate. There are no moving parts. There are no parts you have to worry about losing. I like how quickly the flame comes to a bloom so you can get your pot over the heat quicker. I like how quickly it brings water to a boil as well. I also like the cost of this little stove. At this price, it is almost on par with a Trangia alcohol burner. And as you saw, it is almost half the price of the Tokes version of this stove. Now, there are a few downsides. And of course, the first being is fact is there is no way to extinguish the flame in this stove unless you come up with some type of a snuff cap. There is no way that you can simmer with this stove unless you come up with some type of a simmer ring. Speaking of which, I talked about how I made the snuff cap and simmer ring for this stove, but I did not demonstrate. So if you're interested in having me show you how I made those items, just comment in the comment section below and I'll create, uh, create a separate video. All right, my question to you is, do you own one of these stove? What are your thoughts on it? Is it something that interests you? All right, that's all I have for you in this video. If you have any comments, please put the in the comments section below. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section below. And as I mentioned, I'll put all the specifications for the stove and where you can purchase it in the video description. So that's enough for today. Get out and explore and take that path. Let's travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.